Spanning Tree Protocol is a Layer 2 protocol. It finds and removes switching loops from the network. It builds a virtual topology of the entire network and checks all links. If switches have more than one path to a single destination, it enables only one path and disables all additional paths to remove loops. It does not make any changes to the physical layout. For example, here it virtually disabled this link. Now, even the switches have this link but they cannot use it to forward frames. STP runs a separate instance for every VLAN. For example, if you have three VLANs, there will be three STP instances. Each instance builds and uses its own virtual topology. The STP virtual topology starts from the root bridge. All STP running switches first elect a root bridge for every VLAN. After electing a root bridge, they use it as a reference to make all other decisions, such as which ports will block to remove loops and which ports will forward frames. STP selects only one switch as a root bridge from all switches for every VLAN. For example, here we have two VLANs, so there will be two root bridges, one in each VLAN. STP uses bridge ID to compare and select the root bridge. The bridge ID is a 8-byte unique value to each switch. It consists of three components, bridge priority, VLAN ID, and system ID. It saves the sum of the bridge priority and VLAN in the first two bytes. In the remaining six bytes, it saves the MAC address of the switch. Let us understand these components in detail. The bridge priority is a changeable numeric value. It allows us to manipulate the root bridge selection process. The switch having the lowest bridge priority value becomes the root bridge. The default priority value is 32768. If we want STP to select a particular switch as a root bridge, we can change its priority value to lower than others. The system ID is a non-changeable value. STP uses the MAC address of the switch as the system ID. A MAC address is a globally unique address. No two switches can have the same MAC address. Using the switch's MAC address as the system ID ensures that each switch's bridge ID remains always unique. The system ID makes the bridge ID unique across the switches. It does not make unique them across the VLANs. For example, if a switch has two VLANs, the bridge ID will be the same for both. As we know, STP runs a separate instance for each VLAN and each instance elects its own root bridge. If VLANs use the same bridge ID, STP will fail to select the root bridge. To make the bridge ID unique across the VLANs, STP adds the VLAN ID to the default priority. Adding VLAN ID to the default priority ID makes the bridge ID unique across all VLANs and switches in the network. Now that we have learned the bridge ID's components, let us understand the its calculation and the root bridge selection process. When we start a switch, it checks the running configuration for custom bridge priority. If the custom priority value is set, it uses the configured value. If the custom priority value is not set, it uses the default priority value. It adds the VLAN ID to the priority value. It uses the switch's MAC address with the calculated priority value. After selecting a bridge ID for every VLAN on every switch, it compares all bridge IDs within each VLAN and selects the lowest bridge ID as the root bridge ID. Now that we know how STP selects the root bridge, let us do a packet tracer lab to understand how to view and manipulate the root bridge ID. Packet Tracer is network simulator software. Cisco developed it as a practice tool for its certification programs. It includes everything you need to practice the exam objectives of any entry-level certification program. We can use it to practice all STP-related topics. We do not need a complex lab to understand the STP root bridge election process. A simple lab including three switches is sufficient. Use a cross cable to connect switches. Although you can use any port to connect a switch with another switch, you should always use the fastest available port. By default, STP is enabled on all Cisco switches. When we start STP running switches, they first elect the root bridge and then use it as the starting point to build their virtual topology. To view whether a switch is a root bridge, we can use the show spanning tree command in privileged mode. This command displays information about the root bridge, local switch, and the STP status of all active ports on the local switch. This section displays information about the root bridge. If the local switch is not a root bridge then this section includes information about the port that is connected to the root bridge. This section displays information about the local switch. This section displays the port status. Now let us run the same command on the second switch and check the first section to know whether it is a root bridge. As we can see here, this is a root bridge. Since it is a root bridge, both sections display the same information. On a root bridge, all ports are designated ports. Now let us run the same command on the third switch. As we know, there can be only one root bridge, this must be a non-root switch. As we can see here, 
This is a non-root bridge switch. Now, let us suppose we want STP to elect this switch as a root bridge switch. For this, we have to change the default priority on this switch. The spanning tree command changes the default priority for the specified VLAN. The new priority value must be in multiples of 4096. If we use a value that is not in the multiple of it, the command will not accept it. For example, let us specify 10 here. As we can see here, the command is not accepting this value. These are valid values. Let us use the valid value here. The changes take effect immediately. STP reruns the root bridge election process. Since we have changed the priority value of this switch to lower than others, STP selects this switch as the root bridge. Earlier the second switch was the root bridge. Let us run the show spanning tree command again on it. As we can see here, this switch is no longer a root bridge. This way by using the priority value we can manipulate the STP root bridge election process. We can select any switch as the root bridge by changing its priority value lower than others. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.